What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here and today, today I get to talk about my top 10 favorite graphic novel reads of 2021. So let's go ahead and start with that list. And welcome back everybody. So continuing the last week of the year celebration, today I get to talk about my top 10 favorite graphic novel reads of 2021. Now this isn't a list of books that came out in 2021. As a matter of fact, I did my favorite collected editions that came out in 2021 just yesterday. So if you want to check that video out, just click on the link above. Or in case you've already seen it, welcome back. Today I get to talk about books that I read in 2021. They didn't necessarily have to come out in 2021 for me to enjoy these, but I think most of these did come out in 2021. I would love to know what you all enjoyed in 2021. Leave your top 10 favorite reads, whether it was a single issue, whether it was a collected edition, an omnibus, I don't care what it was that you enjoyed. Please leave your comments down below. I love doing hidden gems every month, and some of these books are absolutely standalone, and I'll talk about each one of them. Uh, some of them were missing from my favorite collected editions that some of you all noticed. They were like, why why weren't these in here? Well, you might see them in here. And if you don't see one of your favorite reads, could be because A, I didn't read it, or B, maybe I did and I didn't dig it. But everybody's entitled to their opinion. Does not make yours invalid. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, before I do, smash that like button, please. means the world to us here. Helps uh, the YouTube algorithm find our channel for viewers that are looking for comic book related stuff. So, now let's go ahead and get started. Kicking off this list is Black Widow by Kelly Thompson and Elena Casagrande, published by Marvel Comics. This is a book that took me by complete surprise. And by the way, this one here is teen, rated teen. And I'll be talking about the ratings for each of these books because I know that's important to some people. Um, Black Widow isn't a character that has gotten a lot of love, even after the Avengers movie or even after her own movie. Uh, she's a character that has kind of struggled with having her own ongoing series. She's had some wonderful miniseries, including the Mark Wade one, the Chris Samney and Mark Wade run, and it's phenomenal. This, however, has now taken place of my favorite Black Widow series. I didn't think it could be done, but Kelly Thompson and Elena Casagrande are able to take... Yeah, um, I almost called her Yelena, sorry, I was watching Hawkeye, uh, Natasha Romanoff, and put her into a situation where we haven't seen her before. We see her in the situation where she is now, well, let's just say she's uh, married and has a kid, and that's not the spoiler. So she's not a superhero anymore. And just when you think she's out of the game, villains from her past team up to bring her back. And I thought this had beautiful, heartbreaking moments. We see Natasha act a way that she has not acted before. Casa Grande's artwork is so on point. It's so easy to follow. The action sequences are phenomenal. Uh, I really hope they do this justice by collecting it into an omnibus one day or an oversized hardcover. It's an ongoing series, and this is just the first six issues. Blew me away. Absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't think I could love Black Widow as much as I did Mark Waid's run, but... Kelly Thompson proved me wrong. She blew me out of the water. Like, I love this in 100%. I think from the get-go, whenever I did the upcoming collected issues for Marvel, I talked about how this was my pick of the week, and it made it to my top 10 this year. Did you hear what Eddie Gain done by Harold Shaster and Eric Powell, published by Albatross Funny Books? And I will go ahead and say that this is mature content. So keep that in mind. Um, pretty much everything evil that you can think of happens in this book. So this is based on a true story. It is the story of Eddie Gain, who is pretty much the inspiration for a lot of characters found in Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silence of the Lambs. So you have a really messed up story in here. But it is one that I could not put down. I... I couldn't stop reading it. It's disturbing as hell, I will say that. So, if true crime isn't your thing, or just the abuse of animals, the abuse of children, uh, and I know that's nobody's thing, but people cannot stomach that sometimes, and I completely respect that, so I do like to warn people ahead of time. There is animal torture in here, there is a child abuse in here, I mean, <laughs> there's cannibalism, murder, grave robbing, uh, necrophilia, so... You know, if, if any of those things turns your stomach, don't blame you. You know, maybe stay away. But this is the story of Eddie Gain and how it all started in this small little town in America in the 1950s. And 
how he went from this child that loved his mother, his God-fearing mother. And, I mean, to him, I mean, his mother was his God. And it is a deep psychological study on the man who was Eddie Gain. And I, I, I don't know what kind of awards they're going to win this year, but my God, this thing really shocked me with the amount of details, the work uh, that went into this, the, the research that they had to have done to put this book together, the interviews, just, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not a happy world. It's, it's a sad world how he went from, you know, the, like I mentioned earlier, this child who loved his mother to this human that did all kinds of atrocities to other human beings and if you don't know the story and you're interested i do want to be vague about it uh but <laughs> i did mention all the horrible things um that may keep people away but if you've not read this do yourself a favor it's one that I, one night i read it from cover to cover couldn't put it down amazing series and then you have eric powell's wonderful artwork eric powell of course is the gentleman that drew the goon and the goon was always like a little bit horror well, actually it is horror uh with some slap stick humor in there this has no con this is i mean this is like watching a documentary and watching this child morph into this monster if you will last god book one by philip kennedy johnson and ricardo federici published by black label but really dc comics now the very first thing i want to say about this is i did not do an overview of this book but Oh my god, like, the dust jacket becomes a map. And you all know how I love maps. So the dust jacket, inside of the dust jacket, is a map of this massive fantasy world. This one here is Older Teen. And the one thing I do want to say before uh, going into it, a lot of people sometimes go into comics thinking, okay, this is going to be some light reading. I need a break from prose novels. This, I think, is one of the heaviest reads I had this year. And it's not that it's dialogue heavy. There's just a lot of information, a lot of just knowledge that is being thrown at you. But it's coming from different places. Because what you're dealing with here is a fantasy world that is 30 years uh, separated from each other. Like you have one group uh, 30 years in the past and then you have another group of heroes 30 years in the future. Now, whether these two groups are connected in any way, you can find out for yourself. But so you already have characters that how do I put it, um, do look a little bit alike. But on top of that, you also have prose novels in here, like pages from prose novels. Uh, you have songs, you have poems, and more maps in there. And uh, I I haven't seen world building this deep in, like involved since... I, I'm trying to think of something like... Maybe like Brandon Sanderson's stories. Uh, it's not like... How do I put it? It's not boring, uh, like, reading about all the families of hobbits at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring. But if that's your thing, cool. You're going to love this. It's not like that. It's just I wasn't expecting to be taking my time with it. It took me about <laughs> a week and a half to read this. But I loved it. I couldn't put it down. This is what I needed. This is the fantasy escape that I needed. So it all takes place in this one world called Cain Anun. And it's pretty much these group of characters are off to on a mission to kill the last living god so hence the name last god but there's a lot of twists and turns in here that i wasn't expecting um it did i will say it did take me a little bit to get used to the characters because like i said uh while ricardo federici's artwork is phenomenal it can get a little bit confusing between characters and the way they look uh, based on the character designs the only thing I will say about this particular hardcover, though, is that I wish it was in deluxe format because I looked at some of the pages from the digital um, content and they look a lot cleaner than they did in the pages that were printed in here. So hopefully one day we'll get a deluxe edition or maybe an omnibus if they decide to make more books from this world. That would be really cool. But 100%, I love that if you're a fan of fantasy and you don't mind you know, a lot of information thrown at you, whether it's through novelization or poems or songs, then look no further than this. This one took me by surprise how good it was. No One Else by R. Kikuo Johnson, published by Fanic Graphics. So if you're looking for something a little lighter that isn't like Last God, look no further than this. This is 
Um, I say teen. Honestly, I wouldn't have a problem with my 10-year-old reading this. This is a story about a moment in time uh, for this character known as Charlene. She lives with her son named Brandon. They live with her father. And then something tragic happens in her life and uh, Brandon's life. And this isn't that big of a spoiler, but she ends up losing her dad that lives with them. Now, she is all caught up in her world. She doesn't have any time to think about funeral arrangements or calling the family to let them know. And Brandon is more concerned about his missing cat. It was like Batman. Um, it all takes place on this little island in Hawaii. And then Robbie, who's like her carefree brother that joined a band at a young age, he came back once their dad passed away. And it's about reconnecting. And there's a lot of powerful moments in here. I really dug this one and a hundred percent recommend reading this one here uh if you look i don't want to say slice of life because it's not really a slice of life it's more like somebody capturing a moment in these people's lives and it's not the easiest moment it's it's some of the hardest decisions that have happened and then you get a a little bit of why they are acting the way that they are. I love all three characters and I wanted the story to keep going. So that's the only downside to this. I love the little format too. The Fantagraphics put this in. 100% recommending this. Stray Dogs by Tony Fleece and Trish Forstner, published by Image Comics. Of course, I think I've hinted at this one being on my list more than any other book that I've read this year. This one took me by surprise. Um, this is definitely for older teen. And I will warn anybody that loves animals, doesn't cannot imagine any of them getting hurt, stay away from this one. Because, well, I'm going to give you the premise. So the premise is all about this little doggy named Sophie. And Sophie, at the very beginning, we see her play with her master, who's this young woman. And then eventually she wakes up one day and she is at this house that's full of dogs. And all the dogs can talk, but they can only talk to each other. Um, when humans can't understand them, of course. So it's dogs talking to each other, and there's this dark, horrible secret that is keeping them there. However, they're forgetting. They don't know how they got there, but all this is what they think their entire life has been. But Sophie discovers her master's scarf in another room and realizes, oh, this new master is hiding things. He might not be that good of a person. We got to get the hell out of here. And that is the premise of this. I heard it described as um, <laughs> all dogs go to heaven meets Silence of the Lambs. And I can kind of see that. I, I totally. Actually, I think I made that comment before looking at the blurbs. But the artwork is like a cartoon. It's it's one of like those Disney cartoons of talking to animals. And it fools you um, into this state of security because there's horrible things going on. And it's all about how these dogs have to break out, but I love it. There is a, a follow-up to this called Stray Dogs Dog Days, I think it's what it's called. So hopefully that will be collected um, in another collection. But this, oh, this was great. This one took me by surprise. Wasn't expecting to love it that much, but I think I've pushed it and I'm pushing it again before the end of the year. Star Wars Legends, The Old Republic Omnibus Volume 1 by John Jackson Miller, Brian Ching, Dustin Weaver, and Travel Foreman, just to name of a few of the creators, published by Marvel Comics. This is teen, absolutely teen. Uh, this is material that was really, really, on Kenny Omar Talk Pretty one day, originally published by Dark Horse Comics, and Marvel put it in this amazing omnibus. Now, why this over so many Omnis that I got to read this year? And it was close. Let me tell you, this list was damn hard to put together. Um, but I like limiting myself to 10. So the reason I chose this is because I'm not the biggest diehard Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars as much as most people my age that went to see it in the theater. But I'm not diehard about it. Like, I don't get into big fights when people are like, oh, episode four is better than six. Or five is the best. Like, I... I get it. I get the love because I'm passionate about X-Men, but I'm not that passionate about Star Wars. But if I, I guess if I had to choose between Star Wars and Star Trek, I'd probably choose Doctor Who. But anyway, I was taken back by this because I never played the video game, the, what is it, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic, and that's what this is based on. Ah, uh, oh man, this was so good. Uh, so we meet this young Jedi, uh, Zane Carrick, who's framed for um, murder by his own master and 
his master's friends. So it's almost like this rebellious Jedi cult that has turned on the Jedi and their oath. And now he has to clear his name by meeting other characters. So all of this takes place long before A New Hope, long before episode one. So you don't have to be even familiar with the movies to enjoy this. It's just a classic action type of movie. Uh, I'm sorry, book. But it does feel like a movie. Oh, this was so good. I did not want it to end. The miniseries at the end, how do I put it? It, it wasn't as good as the rest of the book. The book. Miller's writing, he wrote the entire thing, is just phenomenal. I didn't think I would fall in love with it, and I can't believe I put a, these, this Star Wars book in my top 10. When I read, um, what was it, the, the Darth Vader by Charles Soule, this one took me by surprise how good it was and how I did not want to put it down. And let me tell you, it was a, it was close between this and uh, Aliens Omnibus, but I had to go with this. Man, this was good. And if you've read it, please, in the comments down below, let me know what you think of this collection. And if there's anything else after this, I should be reading. Jonah and the Unstoppable Monsters, Volume 1, by Chris Samney, Laura Samney, and the colors are Matthew Wilson, published by Oni Press, all ages. This is the only book that's all ages in here. And it is a volume one, so the story does continue, but I loved it, and I have to recommend it for anybody that has kids, for anybody, a kid at heart. Oh, this was so cute. It was great, and the artwork is so solid. It's like a cartoon put on paper. That sounds ridiculous. Of course, cartoons are put on paper. They're called comics no more. Uh, anyway, so it is the story of Jonah, who is this little girl, and her sister Rainbow. And one day Jonah goes missing in this world full of monsters. And we have the small little societies of humans that are trying to survive these monsters. And these monsters seem completely unbeatable. However, Jonah keeps thinking that she could take them out. That she can knock them out with one punch. Well, one day Jonah and Rainbow get separated. So Rainbow has to go and search for her sister. She knows she's out there somewhere. They have to be reunited. And if she can find her sister, then they can find their father because they've all been separated. I want to know where this goes. That the, the, the cliffhanger in this just has me craving for more. You know, comic books are supposed to be about fun and, and reading it with your family is the way that I've always envisioned them. So I had to at least put this particular all ages book in here. Oh, this was such a joy to have in my library and I cannot wait for future volumes. Once in Future, book one by Karen Gillen and Dan Mora, published by Boom Studios. This one here is teen and up. When I did my top 10 favorite Boom comics of all time, it was before I read this. Would I make that list again and add this in there? You're damn right I would, because this blew me away. I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, just when I was talking about Jonah, that comics are supposed to be fun. That's what this is. This is a summer blockbuster that does not stop. It is the story of a retired monster hunter named Bridget McGuire. And she's coming out of retirement because these evil forces are trying to resurrect the king of England. So Arthur is coming back. And he's not as good as people might think he is. And she's going to need the help of her grandson, Duncan, who she has kind of been training all his life. Now, she lives in a retirement home. She gets out of the retirement home. I've done an overview of this. Of course, this made my list. Fell in love with it. Oh, my gosh. This is the way... I think this is what comics are supposed to be, right? Yes, there is this impending doom that's coming, but that we have a lot of hope. But let's have some damn fun on the way uh, to rescue the world. Oh, this is such a treat to read. And making this list really makes me happy that I still, you know, 35 plus years reading comics, I still find beauty in this medium. And there's still great stories to be read. Better Place by Dwayne Murray and Sean Daly, published by Top Shelf Productions. This is a book I just finished reading uh, last week when we decided to take a little family getaway. And I, I, I cried in the car reading this. So expect some tears. Uh, this one is honestly... I'm okay with my 10 year old reading this. I don't, I guess it depends. Uh, but the premise of this is about Dylan, who's a young boy with an imagination that is unlimited. Uh, he thinks of himself as a superhero sidekick named Kid Cosmo, and his grandfather plays the role of the main superhero named Red Rocket. And together they put on these homemade costumes and go through town 
on shopping carts and just have adventures and use their imagination. Oh man, that what a beautiful image that is to begin with. Sadly, and this is, I mean, this isn't a spoiler, but sadly, Dylan loses his grandfather at the very beginning. And his mom tells him that his grandfather has gone to a better place. Now it's up to Kid Cosmo, Dylan, to go and find his grandfather at this better place. Because he thinks a better place is like a retirement home. That it's a physical place here on Earth that he can go and meet his grandfather. So there's a lot of superhero tropes in here. There's a lot of comic books in here. The colors are beautiful. The message is wonderful. I, the, the very ending, I, I, I teared up. I, I'm teared up thinking about the book. Man, I, I loved it. Uh... And the message, I think, is what got to me. And then, the con like, you know, he's disconnected from his mother. So there's this whole journey about him trying to find his grandfather, who he thinks is in a physical location on Earth, and his mother trying to find him. And through his adventures, he gets to team up with other characters. And I think it's this one here is definitely worth reading. I, I cannot even remember. Whoever recommended me this book, thank you so much. Because it definitely deserves a place in top 10. To wrap up this list, Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith, published by Fanagraphics. A lot of people were surprised when I did my top 10 favorite collected editions of 2021 and did not include this. Well, because I knew that it was going to be on this list. I did include Once in Future on both lists uh, because I think the production of the slipcase and everything was wonderful. And that list was hard enough to put together anyway, but this is... If I had to choose one book this year, this is the one. If, if there was a top one list of 2021, this is it. Uh, this is mature content. Uh, again, things that you'll find in here are child abuse. And I need to throw this out there too, is that these characters that you're going to be reading about in here aren't good people. There's a lot of derogatory terms being used for the times because... These stories take place in the 40s and in the 60s, so keep that in mind. That sort of language bothers you, then this might not be for you. It's it's rough to talk about because it's such a powerful story, um, but it all revolves around this character named Bobby Bailey. And Bobby was abused in his home, and he's deciding to join the army. Well, instead of joining the army, they take him to a secret experiment where they're doing some experiments on him. And then we get through these beautifully, oh my god, the images in here by Barry Winter Smith. I think this is the best thing that he has, you know what, I'm just going to say it. This is the best thing that he has ever drawn. And this is coming from a longtime fan of his. And the black and white images are just detailed. I don't think color would have done this book justice. I know, I know some people can't stand black and white art, but you are missing out if you don't pick this up despite the black and white artwork. The colors, I think, would have hurt because you wouldn't appreciate the cross-hatching, the amount of detail to his faces, his backgrounds, the amount of emotions they have. These flashbacks tell the story of Bobby Bailey and the people surrounding him and how interconnected the entire world is. I... The best way I can describe this to, to people that read superhero comics is it's like Weapon X, but with a lot of heartache. Just when you want things to work out for some of these people, crap just happens. And it's not fair. And it's not fair what you know what they did to Bobby at the beginning with the experiments. But And maybe I'll do a review of this because I do want to talk about how powerful and emotional this book was. Um... The artwork is phenomenal. I'm sure you're looking at the pages right now. It's it's mind-boggling how Barry Windsor Smith put this together. Now, it was 35 years in the making. This originally started as a Hulk story that, unfortunately, uh, at the time, Marvel said, you know, there's no way we can do this. And then Bill Mantlo took some of the story ideas and not plagiarized because he knew the book was going to be published eventually, but used them for his, what was it, uh, Crossroads, I think is what the storyline was. But then Barry Winsor Smith took it to Dark Horse, he had a Fallen Out, then DC, and ending up at Fanagraphics 35 years later. This book is 35 years in the making, and, you know, when you have a book that that's been in the making that long, you have high expectations, especially when you have a name like Barry Winsor Smith, did not 
failed to meet any of those expectations. As a matter of fact, it exceeded them. And this book belongs in everyone's library. And like I said, if I had to choose one book out of this entire pile uh, to, for, to, to pick this year, this is the one. This is the one. And man, what a way to end the list. So if you're interested in purchasing some of these books, I believe they're still all in print, check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and those were my top 10 reads of 2021 let me know in the comments down below what your top 10 were top 5 top 3 top 20 i don't care however many no let's keep the top 10 I didn't break the rules. You shouldn't either. Top 10. Let me hear it. Let me know what you read that you really enjoyed. Like I said, whether it was a single issue, standalone graphic novel, collected edition, an omnibus, whatever it was that you enjoyed, I would love to know all of that in the comments section. I'm going to be doing my top list that I'm looking forward to in 2022, but tomorrow uh, will be the collected editions coming out in January, and then Saturday's our live stream. Sunday will be the my top 10 picks for January of 2022. So look for that list sometime soon is what I'm trying to say. But this is the way that I love wrapping up the year, talking about the books that I love, uh, talking about the books that I enjoyed reading, even though the subject matter sometimes can be a little rough. I think there's a certain there's a certain beauty about this medium that can only be done in this medium that you can't do in movies, you can't do in TV shows, you can't do in Broadway musicals, you can't do in animation or radio plays. Like, this is the only way, to me, that I think some of these stories belong, and that's it. Uh, this was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. We are on Patreon. Uh, it's a phenomenal way to support the channel if you can do so, and thank you so much to our existing patrons. Couldn't be making videos like this possible without you all. We're also on Spreadshop. Great way to get swag, you know, shirts, hats stickers uh great ways to support the channel and more importantly all of you stay healthy and stay safe out there i will see you tomorrow much love